Hello, this is another look at some uh, vectors and uh, this time the intersection of lines and planes. Obviously, the picture shows kind of what could happen if you try to intersect a straight line with a plane. The first example here, basically these two things are parallel. So you can see this line here is parallel to the plane. Uh, and because it's parallel to the plane, it essentially means that they will never cross, that that plot will always go in the same direction as the plane, and these two will never cross. Um, and of course, the more general situation is they're not parallel. And um, you can see this one's coming up from underneath, hits the plane there at this point of intersection, as we call it, and then it carries on going. Um, and I suppose the third and only uh, other option is that the line actually sits in the plane itself, and it never, ever leaves. So here there would be an infinite number of solutions because any way you want, it's in the plane. So it's always intersecting. Here, there's probably only going to be ever one intersection um, because it's a straight line and it hits us, you know, a flat surface. Whereas here, there's no solutions. So not one infinite. Um, and that's what we're going to be looking at. So uh, let's have a look at this one. Find the intersection between the given line and the plane. Now, um, I suppose the very first thing I noticed, is this is written as a Cartesian equation and this is as a vector equation. So I can just change this. I can write this one as r dot n um, equals, well, in fact, I know the n, don't I? Let's actually put that in straight away. r dot 2 minus 1 and 2, and that equals 7. And the reason why I wanted to do that is essentially because this says r equals this, and I've got an r over here. And so it's a bit like simultaneous equations. You sub one into the other and see what you get. So r here, I suppose, is 4 plus 3 lambda. Um, minus 3 plus no lambda and so on. And so I'm just going to rewrite this. So therefore, I'm going to write this as just one thing. Look at this. I'm going to write 4 plus 3 lambda. Uh, minus 3. Technically plus no lambda, but I can't be bothered writing it. And then 1 minus 2 lambda. And that, of course, is dotted with this 2 minus 1, 2. And I know what the answer's got to be. The answer's got to be 7. So let's do the dotting. So it's two lots of four plus three lambda. So that's eight plus six lambda. Minus one times minus three is plus three. And two lots of that is plus two minus four lambda. And that equals seven. And you can see quite easily, we work out how, what lambda is. Six lambda minus four. Now I've got two lambda. And I've got eight, 11, 13 equals seven, so two lambda is minus six, and presumably lambda is minus three. Um, now, because I've got one answer like this, there is um, a point of intersection. So therefore, I'm gonna write the point of intersection, can't be bothered writing it, point of intersection equals, and that where it's minus three, I can sub it in. So it's four plus, it says here, three lots of uh, minus three is minus nine, so four minus nine. Of course, I can work that out quite easily. Minus five. What's the next one? Oh, the next one's minus three, no matter what. So I don't have to do anything with the lambda there. And one minus two lambda, I think that's one plus six, um, which is obviously seven. So that's not really a point. I suppose writing it properly, I should have written it as a coordinate. And there it is. Don't know what the answer is. Hopefully it's the same. Minus five, minus three, seven. Yes. So the second question, um, the intersection of a line on the plane again. Find the intersection between the given line. Notice the given line is not written so nicely. Uh, perhaps I'll need to adjust that. And perhaps and then I'll adjust this. I'm going to try and do this in vectors again because it worked quite well last time. Now the key here is that lambda equals all these things. So I can set up three equations. Lambda equals that. Um, lambda is also equal to y over minus three, and lambda equals z plus four over two. Now I can rewrite each equation, so I get x, y, and z. Minus one moves over, and the one moves over, and that strikes me as one um, minus lambda is equal to the x. I'll write it like that. What about this one? I reckon y equals minus three lambda, and this one I reckon z equals two lambda minus four. Okay then, so what does that tell me? Well, it tells me that my equation, my line, is, take the numbers first of all, so I've got a one, here I've got a no number on its own, here I've got a minus four, plus how many lambdas have I got? 
Well, I've got minus one lambda. I've got minus three lambda. And I've got two lambda. Now, there are quicker ways of doing that and jumping straight to it. If you look at these, this initial thing here and look at the answers here, you can actually jump straight to that quite quickly. But I've gone through it methodically, if you like. But by all means, have a look on uh, YouTube and see if you can find yourself a little easy way of doing it. Or just work it out for yourself. It's not hard. And over here, of course, I haven't got that R there. I want to write this as an R equation. So R dot, and you can just take these numbers here, 1, minus 3, and minus 4. And that equals 12. And so now I can substitute this into here. So therefore, I've got 1 minus lambda. You can see actually these are going to come out and I'm going to use these again. Minus 3 lambda and 2 lambda minus 4. That is being dotted by the 1 minus 3 and minus 4. And the answer is 12. It's the same now as the question before, isn't it? So if we multiply this out like before and add them together, what do we get? One lot of that is 1 minus lambda. Minus 3 times minus 3 is plus 9 lambda. And that's minus 8 lambda, presumably plus 16, equals 12. Ah, interesting. Look look at all this. My lambdas, minus 1, minus 8 makes minus 9. Plus that, I've got no lambdas left. And what I've got, actually, is a statement that says 17 equals 12. Now, I know 17 is not equal to 12. Therefore... We've got an inconsistency in this equation. Therefore, they do not intersect. And we know they do not intersect because we didn't find a lambda. And that's basically what we're looking out for. We've got this inconsistency. What does it say? The line and the plane do not intersect. There you go. So um, find the intersection between the given line pl um, and plane or show they do not intersect. So it's the same idea. So um, this time they've, be, they've at least written it like that. This time they haven't written it like this. So I suppose I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to say R dot. Um, well, I've got to be a bit careful. There's no Z. So I'm going to write 1 minus 3. And this is where I've got to be careful. 0 it is a three-dimensional thing equals 6. And I think it's broadly the same as last time. So I can substitute this in. 3 plus 3 lambda minus 1 plus lambda and just 1 there. No lambdas at all. I think we've had that before. And I'm dotting that by 1 minus 3 and 0. That equals 6. So multiply out. I get 3 plus 3 lambda plus 3 minus 3 lambda um, 1 and 0. Um, and well, that's plus 0. And it equals 6. And you can see 3 lambda, oh, disappears again. But, interestingly, it does give me 6 equals 6. Now, I think when you get this happening, this is basically one of those ones where it is always in the plane. So, I've got 6 equals 6. I've got no idea what lambda is. Because there is no one lambda. It's any lambda. So, I'm going to say here, there's an infinite number of solutions. So, not well, first time we had one solution. Then we had um, no solutions. I think we've got an infinite number of solutions. And the reason I think that is because I think the line is in the plane itself. The line is in the plane. What have I got here? The line that lies in the plane there. And that, it basically, 6 is always equal to 6. So this is always in the plane. Um, now, I've done three examples. That's a relatively short video and a relatively nice topic. Okay, thank you very much.